More than 100 youth residential treatment facilities operate in Utah, housing thousands of teens from all over the country every year. One of them is the focus of a new NBC News investigation. KSL investigator Courtney Johns looking into that facility and how it's connected to calls for more federal regulation. The facility we're looking at is called Elevations RTC. It's a teen treatment center in Syracuse and it's currently being sued. Elevations is part of Family Help and Wellness, which operates five other residential treatment facilities in Utah and others across the country. Now this one in North Carolina recently shut down after a child died. And now an NBC News investigation has found state records indicating multiple locations have violated state records for employees failing to notify their respective states of critical incidents, including injuries and alleged abuse. I felt like I started to lose myself as a, as a human being. It's been three years since Finpool's father placed him at Elevations RTC in Syracuse, Utah. I mean, I was... I was trapped. Three months in, Poole says he found the courage to tell his therapist at Elevations a family member sexually abused him. He said that I'm going to do my own investigation because quite honestly, I don't believe you. Utah law requires therapists report suspected abuse immediately. In Poole's case, the first report was filed with the Utah Department of Health and Human Services 24 days later, according to police reports. Elevations would not return our calls or emails. This statement on its website says the therapist briefly delayed reporting and that no charges were ever filed against the accused family member. Poole's therapist did plead guilty for failure to report child abuse, which is a misdemeanor. It doesn't feel adequate enough. Now suing Elevations, Poole's claims include negligence, false imprisonment, and child abuse. During his 10 month stay, which began in August of 2021, he says he lost a significant amount of weight. He also says he was put in seclusion for nine days. Utah law state seclusion can only be used for the immediate safety of the child or others. Records from the Utah Department of Health and Human Services show Elevations was issued a written violation for improper use of the practice on June 3rd, 2021, just two months before Poole was brought to Elevations. Senator Mike McKell authored the law regarding seclusion and restraint policies. And this is an industry that grew up outside a regulatory framework. No one was paying attention. Nobody was paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. SB 127, which went into effect on May 5th, 2021, requires the Utah Department of Health and Human Services to inspect each residential facility quarterly. It bans the use of medication to restrain a child without prior state authorization. And facilities have one business day to report to the state any use of restraint, seclusion, or an incident that involved an injury. According to DHHS documents obtained by NBC News, Elevations reported restraining children at least 130 times from May of 2023 to May of 2024. Elevations did not return our requests for comment about their restraint and seclusion practices. Neither did Family Help and Wellness. Now, in addition to the organization's operations in Utah, Idaho, and New Mexico, it also had a wilderness camp in North Carolina that was shut down earlier this year after the death of a 12-year-old boy. The autopsy report concluded his death a homicide, and that case is still under investigation and no one has been charged in his death with Trails Carolina denying any wrongdoing. Child welfare experts and advocates say serious incidents at associated facilities show the need for closer scrutiny across state lines, a concern McKell has brought up in the past. Look at facilities that have had violations in other states that may have ownership in the state of Utah. Just have a, an ability to monitor and track where our kids are coming from. But even if Utah knew about owners with issues in other states, DHHS told us, quote, we do not have the statutory authority to use facility violations or adverse incidents in other states when making Utah specific licensing decisions. But licensed individuals do have to pass a background check. Congress is working to address this issue with the Stop Institutional Child Abuse Act, which would provide federal oversight to youth residential programs and create the first national database and log the use of restraint and seclusion. But the Disability Law Center says Utah 
can't wait for Congress. We've just seen these problems for a long time. Nate Krippis says the nonprofit joined with the National Health Law Program in July to submit a federal complaint claiming DHHS has failed to provide adequate oversight of residential facilities, including teen treatment centers. They're here now um, and they don't seem to be going away. So I think the question is, if they're going to remain, um, what do we need to do to make sure that, that the kids there are, are safe? In response to the complaint, DHHS wrote they are working to continuously improve the quality of their services, citing the recent merger of the Department of Human Services and the Department of Health as a way to create more efficient systems. It's important when it matters to these families and these individuals. While some advocates look to regulation, Poole hopes his lawsuit sends a strong message to all those in power at troubled teen facilities. We're not going to let you do this to us anymore. As a part of Poole's ongoing lawsuit, last month a state licensing panel ruled that Elevations appeared more interested in keeping Poole in their facility for monetary reasons rather than his best interests as a minor. NBC News spoke with former staff members and other students who attended that facility, and we will link their story with this one on KSLTV.com.